Perfect. So this is our agenda for this afternoon. Um, just a lazy six point agenda to get through. So I'm going to talk through a bit of the background of the energy breakthrough. So the origin and the quick bit of the history uh, for you, particularly for those of you who are new. We hope that's really helpful. I'll talk through the three areas of assessment. So the energy breakthrough is not just a race. Um, it is an education program. And so as part of that, we have these three elements, display and presentation, design and construction, and then a series of trials and tests. We also have a new video display and presentation option that I want to explain for you. And this is particularly relevant for people who have been involved with the program in the past. This is something that's new. So something for you to check out there. So those assessment areas of display and presentation, design, construction, the trials, they flow through everything uh, and they flow through these different categories, which I'll go through in part three. There's a few other things that you can get involved in. We've got a mentor program with Transurban. We've got some worksheets that you can use with your students. We've got ways to help you, uh, lots of different things, which I can talk through later in the program and also where to get help. So who do you want to talk to? Who can you talk to um, if you're getting stuck or if you want to know more information as well? So that's what we want to cover. Um, really, hopefully some information here for if you're brand new uh, or if you've been around for quite a while. And that's really my challenge here is to try to explain this big concept of the energy breakthrough and those people who have been involved with for a while will try to say, oh, it's just really difficult to understand unless you've seen uh, a push cart or a human power vehicle or an, an electric vehicle in action to try to explain this to other people can be really tricky. So that's why we're running this session. Uh, we also know that there's been this thing around for a couple of years called COVID, which means that no one has really been in vehicles or been involved with the program really hands-on in a hands-on way for a couple of years. And we know um, in my role with speaking with a number of schools that you're working with students that have never been involved with the program before, never uh, really interacted with some of the concepts we're talking about here. So hopefully um, by giving you a refresher or imparting with you some knowledge and some information, you can then pass that on to your students and get you refired up a little bit for the new year. That's kind of the idea. We are um, powered by imagination. That's what we say as our tagline. And really how this comes out is that we set a series of rules and regulations in terms of our specifications in the handbooks and the, the rules. And then we really leave it up to schools and students and teachers to try to work out what sort of imaginary, uh, imaginative solutions they can come up with for those problems. So that's part of what we uh, are all about with the Energy Breakthrough. Quick word on some of our partners so that you can understand kind of the, the backbone of the event. The first being Central Goldfields Shire Council. They're obviously the host of the event themselves in Mariborough um, in November at the end of the year. They also provide a lot of our admin support, a lot of our equipment and volunteers. And then the other partner is Country Education Partnership. So I'll talk some little bit more about them in terms of the origin of the event. Uh, but this is an agency, an organization uh, that's been around for about four decades. And their real mantra is around helping and supporting students and schools in regional and rural parts of the country have access to education. So they don't want people in small schools um, or small regional areas uh, of Victoria and beyond missing out on education opportunities. And so they're the two partners, um, the main partners, and then we have some other sponsors as well that help make, uh, make the event and make the program happen. So quick spot of history, and this may be new news to some of you, uh, it may be old news to some of you as well. So the origin story is that way back in 1990, so there were schools from this country education project, and then it was called project, now it's called partnership. Anyway, CP area. So they are over in the Mallee track. So over near Mildura, um, Mildura Redcliffs, kind of rainbow, that part of uh, Victoria, and they were heading across the border to South Australia, to this thing called the South Australian Petal Cree. Now, it's now called the Australian HPV Super Series. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's very cool. Um, I've participated in myself. It's fantastic program, still running. Anyway, the CEP time team at the Thought said, you know, we could keep funding and giving these schools some money to keep going across the border to this event, which is really cool. 
or we could look at doing something here in Victoria and start something new. So they ran an expression of interest process and we're looking for a host location, regional setting for an event that would have a really strong education focus. And so they looked at a few different places, you know, a few parameters within two hours of Melbourne, regional setting, had some good environment around it and Maribara was perfect and a successful bidder. So fast forward to uh, November 1991, and this first energy breakthrough was held in Maribara. Um, had RSEV technical support, they helped for the first year, they come on board as the naming rights sponsor in the second year, and then carried that support through for over 25 years until that finished up just a few years ago. Now the first year there was eight pushcart teams and 18 human powered vehicles and hybrids. So hybrids being anything that has two power sources, might be pedal, petrol, pedal electric, uh, or petrol and electric together. We're all pretty um, au fait, I suppose, with different hybrid types now, but wasn't so common in the early nineties. So here's a couple of early shots, um, bit of history lesson here from the 1990s. Um, the one on the top left, push carts, you'll see there's some rope steering, Goodness, it looks like she's got some gardening gloves and there's classic kind of foam helmet. Um, things have changed a bit from there. Uh, I love the one on the top right. I love sort of the skinny wheels, you know, the strap uh, pedals, virtually no fairing um, and some like space goggles. Looks like he's ready to jump on the lawnmower after he finishes his stint, that kid, but looks like they're having fun. Um, the BP one on the bottom left there, uh, it's basically like a motor car, right? Um, they were some of the early hybrids. They were basically like little cars um, that were roaming around and also the display and presentation. So this school below here, St. Paul's, they're doing a presentation to the judges and you can just kind of get a feel for how things looked in the early nineties. Some things change, um, some things have remained consistent through that time. So fast forward to today. And remember I said there was like, 18 uh, different teams involved way back when. So now it's 4,000 students per year participating from your schools and other schools, 350 teams over 150 schools and between 15 and 20,000 people come to Maribara for the big celebration. Obviously that's the tail end of things. This is all happening in schools, just like yours throughout the year. And the economic benefit for the Central Goldfield Shire is about 4.5. 7 million. And so you can just see how some of these things have changed. Um, you know, two decades or three decades is a really long time. You'll see the push carts and those styles, they're still a push cart, but it's much more sophisticated. Um, you'll just see the number of people who are involved and the level of quality and the different interpretations of the rules um, involved as well. In the top uh, right there is Maiden Gully Primary School, um, one of the schools from Bendigo. And you'll see they're doing a presentation um, and building a story. And I'll explain a little bit more about that now, but you can see the sort of the level of change that they've done in terms of their approach to the presentations compared to what it was like in the early nineties. So that's a quick history lesson. So you can kind of understand, okay, where's it come from? Where's it been? And now uh, this is one of the aerial sites from a couple of years ago. So we now have, two tracks on site in Maribara, one where predominantly the primary schools participate, that's the one in the foreground. And then there's one in the background there, which is generally where the secondary schools participate. And you can sort of make them out with the red and white barriers out there. Um, for those of you who are new to the program, uh, every school has a pit space where they can change over riders in, in the different en endurance trials. And uh, most schools, camp on site. So some local schools will obviously stay uh, at home and just come in and, in and out each day. But generally speaking, most schools will camp on site together. This big melting pot of uh, kind of private, public, uh, independent, Catholic schools all together, specialist schools, um, primary schools, secondary schools, um, senior schools, all hanging out together, all participating really on this kind of level playing field, I guess, if you see, you know, the challenges are out there uh, and they're all competing together. So um, that's what it's all about. It is very much a schools event and we're trying to instill school pride and, and engender school pride through the project. So some of those aims, and as I said, things have changed, but actually these aims haven't changed since the early 
1990s. So the energy breakthrough, uh, and I'll give you a chance to read through some of these in a moment, but it is an excellent technology project for students from all year levels, as I just said. It allows young people to explore solutions to environmental solutions and to transport um, issues. Provides that opportunity for schools and community, maybe local businesses or, or even um, guys and girls from local businesses to come and work with schools and build those relationships. And sometimes that's really important. Sometimes from a teaching point of view, you might be saying something and trying to get a message through to some students. It's kind of not going in, it's kind of not clicking, or maybe it is, maybe you're an awesome teacher and you don't need that. But maybe sometimes having someone external come and explain a concept that you've been working on that the students will listen in a different way, should I say. So that's really important. Opportunity for women and girls to participate together, and I'll explain in that in a little bit. Be fun, you know, fundamentally, um, as teachers, as educators, uh, we want this to be a fun program, and we know that for schools and, and students, once they've caught the energy breakthrough bug, so to speak, um, they really love participating and, and responding to those real world challenges. And then also uh, an idea and a, an opportunity to explore and address vehicle design so, and safety issues. So how are we gonna move around in the future? What's the most efficient way to do that? What is electric vehicles and e-bikes all about? Um, all of those kind of concepts bear themselves out as well as a lot of safety issues. So why do vehicles have seat belts? Why do they have mirrors? Why do they have airbags? Why do they have all horns? Why do they have all these different safety aspects? So that's kind of baked in to the program, if you like. All right, onto some of the assessments. Um, and as I mentioned at the top, it is an education program. And so uh, it, we do assess all the teams across different areas, be it display and presentation, which is represented in the pie charts there in the blue, design and construction in the green, and then the trial components. And really what these pie charts are trying to demonstrate and communicate is that whilst the on-track components, those big yellow blocks are really important, from a program point of view, we do assess your students and your teams on these concepts of display and presentation and design and construction as well. So. We do give certificates out to each of those winners of the different aspects, but we save the trophies and we save the medals for the overall winner. So the one who has scored the highest uh, scores across all three of those components combined. So that makes up uh, 100 points. So the, the team that's closest to 100 points in each of the classes wins the, the trophies. Not that it's all about winning, but I think you know where I'm going with um, that concept. So let me talk through some of these different things because certainly if you're new to the program, you're probably just thinking, what the heck is designer construction? So um, at an allotted time at Murrabara, you will come in, you'll, your school and your students will bring in uh, your vehicle and this is a 20 minute question and answer discussion. So it's not a formal discussion, that uh, formal presentation, so I say that happens in a different time, but this will be two or three judges and they'll ask your students a series of questions about what they've built and why. Um, really, we're trying to understand the knowledge and understanding of the entries across those areas there that are on screen. So look, it's understood that if you're working with a primary school group, um, you know they won't have necessarily the technical skills to understand the difference between mild steel and chromoly or titanium and um, Kevlar, these different materials. It's not necessarily expected, fantastic if they do, um, but it is expected that, you know, if your students are in year 11 and 12, that they may have a, a more advanced understanding and knowledge of things. Um, there is those different um, range of uh, topics that we cover in that area. One tip here is to get to the website, download the handbooks um, that are available for each of the different sections of uh, the competition and have a look at these different points in detail. Under each of these dot points, there are some tips, there are some different things that our judges will be looking for in that discussion. So you'll be able to go through and actually understand and unpack, okay, so what have we done in this area? Here's a quick snapshot of one of the schools participating in one of these areas. This is from Kingswood College. Um, you'll see they're talking through um, some diagrams and some, um, some work that they've done here. Um, and actually we had the teacher from this school on yesterday. So 
as part of this portfolio work, they're able to dis describe and discuss what they've done throughout the year. So in particular, this shot is on the top there, that's the plan timeline. So what they thought would take in terms of constructing the vehicle, how long things would take and when that happened. And then the bottom page is actually how things came out, how it actually worked. And you'll also see there, there's a wheel. So they've been able to talk about some of the different components and why they've used different things. Um, very much a discussion, Q and A sort of style here. So um, prep your students to share the load around. <clears throat> this is pushcarts. So for those of you um, who might've participated in pushcarts or not participated in pushcarts before, their design and construction aspect, they actually have 30 minutes to assemble that pushcart from Flatpak as it is right now, um, right through to an assembled pushcart in under 30 minutes. And then as part of that design and construction assessment, the, the judges are actually looking, well, how are they all working together? How are they using the tools? Do they know what different spanners do? Do they know how the hammers work? You know, do they know how, do they actually know what they're doing or is it, a teacher or a parent just built the whole thing and, and kind of they're, they're bluffing their way through. So once they've assembled it, then the judges will go onto that Q and A and ask them some of those questions as well. So um, that's what happens in pushcart design and construction. It's a little bit different from the other um, categories in that. And I'll get onto those other categories soon. To help you in this area, we have a fairly simple design and construction worksheet. So you can work this through with your students, either in your classes or after school or however you do this. And it's a very simple three column process of discussing as a, as a group. So we've seen this done where students will break up into groups of twos or threes, kind of discuss their responses and then share them back with the class as well. So in terms of vehicle design, um, what's that look like? What have they done in this area in terms of designing the vehicle? And then how can we show the judges what we've done there? So that might be diagrams, it might be CAD designs, it might be sketches, doesn't need to be super technical or complicated, might be just some drawings, some of those sort of things. Um, and then you can go through each of these areas. So they're available as well. If you have any questions on design and construction, feel free to chuck them in the chat as we go through. <clears throat> Display and presentation. So this is the more formal presentation. Um, and again, I've got some worksheets for these. So that um, this is Madden Gully, one of the schools. And so you'll see it's very formal presentation with all of the artwork and everything at the back. To, up to a 20 minute formal presentation, doesn't have to be that long. That's just your time limit. Followed by a 10 minute Q and A with the judges afterwards. Two different areas here. The oral, so what's said and how it's said and how the roles are shared around. And then the second area being the visual display. So how does everything look? Um, how are the images and, and how do they show, I guess, the proof of the work in what's been done here? Once again, it's understood that your primary school students or your junior students will not be quite as advanced uh, in their work as the higher, um, you know, your year 11 and 12 students. So these different areas might be about presentation style. So have the, have the students gone to some effort in terms of preparing the presentation and speaking clearly uh, and doing that sort of work, or are they kind of just presenting really reluctantly? Is there teamwork in the presentation? So have they shared it around or is just the team captain saying everything and everyone else is standing around kind of mute? Knowledge and understanding. So. Does it sound like the students know what they're talking about in terms of the energy breakthrough or are they just kind of reading from a card? And then the development of the story. So what's happened throughout the year? What, you know, what, what things went well? What didn't work well? What did they test? What did they break? As I said before, they might've come up with a timeline that they said everything's gonna happen sweetly and then things have gone crazy. So those sort of parts is what we wanna see in that. The visual display, is really assessed in two ways, the layout. So is it fairly easy to follow what, what was being shown here? And then a bit of the quality of the display, like what's the, what are the photos like? What's the sort of content like? So, <clears throat> excuse me, once again, worksheet in this area um, can help you piece together um, your assessment in this area. And then here is Maiden Gully. So kind of my hero display and presentation school for today, if you like. Um, 
And so they're using the concept of the Mad Hatter Tea Party to tell their story. So, um, and you'll see in the background there, they've got lots of different visual elements um, throughout uh, as well. So that's kind of how they've built a story, if you like, a bit of a framework. Um, it doesn't have to be all singing and all dancing, but certainly it can be really fun for students to get into this. Why do we do this? Because presenting skills and being able to talk to different judges and people is just part of doing life and doing work and building in those skills. So if we can uh, infiltrate some public speaking into uh, this program, then we're all the better for it. Here's another example where there's no costumes because I can just almost see some teachers on the call now going, I want to do costumes. Um, this is one from Maribara Ed Centre. You'll see here they've got a table in front of the judges. Um, they've got some info boards up the back uh, with different aspects. And you can see, you know, I get the sense I wasn't there, but I get the sense here that the students are sort of taking in turns to explain different things to the judges. So um, there are different ways of skinning the cat, if you like, and I encourage you to have a chat with your students about what's really going to work for you. Um, the judges are typically, uh, there's typically a retired teacher, um, someone involved with education, um, and then there's also typically some uh, one or two community members. So different people who have just, you know, they're volunteering, they don't have any specific expertise, but they're just really excited and, and want to be a part of the energy breakthrough. So um, we kind of cover off on those couple of areas in terms of the judges. All right, new for this year. So if you um, participated before, this will be new to you because we haven't done it before. Um, but uh, of course, obviously, if um, you know, if you participated lots of times, then um, this will be a new option for you as well. So what we're doing here is we're going to be asking you to tell the story of your year, your energy breakthrough year, if you like, in submission of video prior to the event. So this is mandatory for all primary school, uh, all pushcarts, sorry, which is primary school, mandatory for all teams in pushcarts. For the pushcarts, minimum of three minutes, maximum four minutes. So you've got a pretty tight window there with no Q&A component. The second one for our HPV secondaries, we're gonna trial this, um, you, it's an option. So you can do it pre-event if you'd like to, <clears throat> or you can do it in person at the event. We don't expect you to do both. So just tick one of the boxes, it's fine. Now these videos, they need to be minimum of five minutes, maximum of 10 minutes, and then there's a five minute impromptu Q&A aspect at the end of that um, 10 minutes set. So how we work that is that our display and presentation coordinator, uh, Laurie Preston, he will provide some questions to the teacher. Um, and the intent is that once they've finished completing their video section, they'll actually, I guess, live video um, the, the teacher asking the questions of the students um, and have, have that video response um, or have that response recorded as they go. Now, this is very much on honesty policy. Our judges will have a bit of a sense of whether the questions have been known beforehand or whether they're completely new by how kind of quick the students respond and the way they respond, again, this is energy breakthrough, it's not sheep stations. Um, but really what we're doing here is a couple of things where we're responding to the fact that display and presentation has been the same for 30 years. So we do wanna try something different. Lots of things have changed in that time, including technology and storytelling. So we wanna trial this and see how it goes. And if there's lots of uptake, then it might be um, broader, it might be all the different categories we can offer this for next year. Couple of notes, it's not a media competition. So we're not expecting to find the next George Lucas or the next Steven Spielberg through this process. What we want is still the emphasis to be on the story. But really anyone with an iPhone or a camera, a camera phone, video phone would be able to create this really quickly. So we don't want it to be high stakes and really stressful. Those pre-event videos, we want them by October 28. So that does compress your timeline, but that will give us enough time to review the content and make sure all the assessments are completed of those videos before the event so that that all lines up really nicely. And then what we also want to do is have the top three videos from each of the categories, the push cuts and the HPV secondary, put them on our website and on YouTube. So that's new um, for this year, one of the ways that we're moving forward. <clears throat> cool. If you've got any questions about any of those assessment areas, and I will get into the trials in the next part, um, do pop them in the chat and we can cover them off 
at the end. So talk through the different classes now. So we've kind of got our categories, um, which I'll talk through in a moment, but our classes. So classes that start with the letter A are for primary schools. And we have two categories there, A1, which is for our rural and regional schools. So if you remember back at the start, CEP is all about rural and regional schools having access to programs. So as part of that, we do have this A1 class, which is for schools with an enrollment of 200 students or less. If you're in a larger primary school, you go into the A2 category. Now, all of these must have uh, half members, whatever number it is, whether it's six or 10 students, half of those students must be female. So again, we're encouraging that aspect of female participation. Our B categories are our junior secondary. So again, year seven to year 10, um, B1 being, it's kind of like the bananas, right? Um, B1 being year seven and eight students, B2 being year seven to 10 students. And that comes from the oldest age group, um, oldest student in your group. So if you've got a bunch of year sevens, but then one year 10, you will need to go into the B2 category. You'll need to go into the highest age group. Unfortunately, I know that can get a bit tricky and a bit awkward with different school compositions and things like that. Our C category goes right up to year 12. So seven to year 12. Again, all of these groups must have an even number of boys or girls, sorry, must have at least 50% female members. So it could be six and two. If there's more females than males, that's okay. All female category, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have an open category as well, which has no gender requirements. So that's often where our all boys end up or groups that haven't quite got enough girls participating. In those secondary levels, there's no school size requirement. So it doesn't matter if you're a massive school or a tiny school, you all go into that one melting pot around um, secondary schools. All right. So they're the classes. Now onto some categories and it's a continuum or it's designed as a continuum, if you like, from innovations, which is for your primary schools, right up to our energy efficient vehicles or our electric vehicles, um, which is your most technically advanced um, vehicles that are involved. So <clears throat> let's talk them through, left to right. So first one, just for um, primary schools, but we do have some secondary schools in here as well. Uh, it's this activity called junkyard challenge and so this is really what it looks like it's teams of four students again two boys two girls or at least at least two girls in the team um, they get a whole bunch of mysterious junkyard materials and so the emphasis of what we're looking in here is about reusing and recycling materials now their challenge is they have 90 minutes to build a device or, or something like that that will move four liters of water across a gap um, so this is an example here of a bridge, one of the ones they've done before, um, but this is the concept around this. And so it's really hands-on, it's really dynamic. Um, it gets very noisy and very messy, but that's kind, of, that's kind of learning sometimes, that's kind of fun. Coordinator for this area is uh, Mary Preston. Um, and we, are also, we have actually stopped the crafty design, the boats. So for those of you who've been involved with the energy breakthrough in the past, we have closed down that category around uh, the sailing boats. We just found that stu students and schools had moved on a bit from that. <clears throat> and so we're starting some something new in terms of robotics now. So Rob Higgins, who's one of our um, coordinators, will be actually running robotics and Sphero, um, which might be familiar to some of you, as a demo event this year uh, with three or four schools um, on the Friday of the event with a series of different challenges. Um, some will be pre-coded, uh, some will be uh, actioned on the day, again, doing that element on the day, and Rob Higgins will be coordinating that. So again, if that flies, if it really works, if there's interest, um, we'll be looking into that um, for next year and make it a permanent feature. Um, we're also doing some work around the edges in terms of drones, because we know that this is what students are really familiar with and they're um, excited about. So we want to go where, want to go where the action is, essentially. So. There are a few changes in that innovations in technology area. Push carts. So uh, push carts based on the humble billy cart, you would have seen from some of the photos, they've been part of our program um, since day one. <clears throat> but one of the things that has changed for this year is that we've changed the program to run Wednesday, Thursday only. Previously it ran over three days. We've now condensed it to two. As I mentioned before, 
There's now that mandatory video element pre-event. I've already told you about the design and construction aspect. <coughs> but the trials are all relays. So a number of different relays there. Obstacle course, sprint, and an endurance as well. So they're the different elements that push carts compete in. Let me just have a drink of water. It's all right, I'm still alive. So HPVs, this is what I imagine most of your, um, most of our callers on the um, category you're on today. So pretty straightforward. They're powered solely by human power. Um, the primary school program runs Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Maribara. <clears throat> Secondary program runs Friday to Sunday. I've already talked about some of those elements uh, already. Now, Tim White's actually one of our lead scrutineers, and I might just throw to you, Tim, just to mention, I guess, talk a little bit about HPV program and, uh, you know, what you feel is the, the biggest, some of the bigger challenges if you're starting out new and some of the people that could talk to, perhaps. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Nigel. Um, yeah, human powered vehicles, one of, the, one of the biggest beasts that there are on the tracks at the moment, um, and probably a really daunting one to get into. I remember when I started in the program as a teacher, the, the instructions or manual was quite small. So it was easy to get your head around it and um, get to know the program. Um, what's done over the years is to highlight changes as it's been developed and, and making it easier for people to read. But if you knew, it'd be daunting. There's no doubt about that. Um, but the biggest thing I'm asking everyone to do is to ask, ask for support, ask for help. Ask for somebody that can be a mentor. There's not a school that wouldn't be able to support you along the journey. And there's many that have been in for a short amount of time and a long amount of time that would be happy to support you pre and during the event and then post moving forward as you go into it as well. So you're not expected to know everything, although we do want you to meet the rules. Um, we want you to actually enjoy the journey in, in following it getting to that point in the end. We want to see every student out there racing, racing safely and having a good time with their, with, with other students and teachers and other schools. So um, ask the questions, put them down, um, link in with other people. That's the key. That's the absolute key to this and familiarise yourself with the, um, with the HBB world. Mm. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. And uh... One of this, I look, we could have shown lots of different photos to show how complicated they are. And I think, as Tim said, if you were to be challenged to build one of these from scratch, if you'd never seen one before, it'd be very difficult, wouldn't it, Tim, um, to build one of these. But um, heaps of different photos I could have shown. But what, I chose this one in particular because it shows uh, a couple of things that we're really looking for in terms of the program. But also, this shows if you've never, put your head inside a pedal vehicle before. Simple concepts like where the pedals are, um, but also some of the safety features that we're looking at. You'll see the chain guard has a chain guard, the, the chain has a chain guard cover on it. The front wheels have uh, wheel guards on it. There's not a lot of space for the rider in the vehicle there. You'll see that front roll bar. If you cast your mind back to the very early photo uh, that I showed at the start of uh, the session, you'll see there was much less bodywork and framework around. And, um, as safety has evolved, the vehicles have evolved as well. Even small things like the right hand handle on um, the right hand handle on the vehicle here that's running the horn through the electric uh, electrics, and at the front of the vehicle is uh, the power pack for the battery because the vehicles run at night. So there's quite a lot of uh, different aspects. And if you've got someone, if you're um, really new to the program and I've never really involved with this before, please do reach out to us. We'll share the contacts at the end and we can point you in the right direction around some of these aspects with the HPVs. <clears throat> triathlon. So triathlon is a, I guess, a subset, if you like, of HPVs. They do use those human power vehicles, um, but they're actually more widely assessed. So they do a obstacle course on the Friday on track one. And I'll show you some photos of that in a moment. They do a time trial relay. So each of the eight riders cycle through on a one lap course. 
and then they do an eight hour endurance on track one. So this is really good for schools uh, that are really new to the program. Um, they might not want to bite off the full 14 hours for primary school or 24 hours for secondary school. Eight hours is a nice amount of time um, to participate for, for the endurance. And again, the coordinator there, Mary Preston, she's really happy to come and meet, talk with you, um, help you through. There's some mentors in that space as well. So part of the unique challenge around the triathlon, and this only happens for the triathlon, is that we have this weird and wacky series of challenges for people. So you'll see the photo on the left. There's some obstacle courses set out by cones. There's also some ramps for the vehicles to maneuver as well. So less about outright speed, more challenging uh, vehicle control and the student's ability to adapt to different scenarios. Again, on the right, we have some actual seesaws. So as the students ride up these seesaws, uh, they will tip over and down as they go. <clears throat> Lots of fun. Energy efficient vehicles. So way back in the early 90s when Energy Breakthrough was talking about hybrid vehicles, uh, this was a really foreign concept, but now as a society and as students, I know we're all thinking about e-bikes and electric vehicles um, and the future of those. So we have some different classes that speak to those. And the challenge here is that the students and the schools get a limited amount of uh, battery power um, that they can recharge during the event, but a limited amount of power that they can carry. Uh, and they really wanna see how far they can carry and that they can travel uh, in the 24 hours alongside those HPVs. So hybrid one, um, I like to call kind of the e-bike or the e-trike category. I'm kind of working on that name. I don't know if it's working for you, but pedal power plus one other source. It could be petrol, but Tim and I and Mick McTeague, our other scrutiny, we're really trying to phase out petrol because um, the world is trying to phase out petrol, but electric uh, e-bike and e-bike technology is very much more available now, but also much uh, safer rather than carrying raw fuel. So that's our hybrid one class. So again, back to our um, C class again, that's boys and girls in the C class up to year 12, or the open class is for teams that have a mixture of boys and girls, which isn't 50-50 essentially. Hybrid two is a true hybrid. So this is two power sources excluding pedals. So this is really looking into your petrol and electric vehicles um, that wanna get through the whole 24 hours with a limited amount of fuel and all electric. And I probably don't need to explain that. They're just electric vehicles. Um, again, program follows Friday to Sunday, design and construction and display it all happens at the event itself. Trial is 24 hours. It's a long time with limited fuel, but lots of fun. And our coordinators there, again, Tim White, who's on the call this afternoon, and Mick McTeague uh, as well are our two lead coordinators. So a couple of different interpretations of this. Um, Cairo Christian School on your right there. Um, they've been participating for a whole lot of years. They always come up with some different ingenious designs um, and really trying to wrestle with different designs and different aspects. You'll see also they have different safety equipment. Um, so that's part of the reason I'm putting in this photo. They do have to wear different helmets and overalls or, or different clothing, depending on the type of fuel they're carrying. And then on the right hand, uh, sorry, the left hand side um, is Girton Grammar Schools um, and they've actually, their electric vehicle. So no pedals in there, just an electric vehicle. And they've actually taken line on us uh, at the last number of energy breakthroughs. Um, so that's how sophisticated, I suppose, that technology is now that um, that vehicle, those vehicles, those electric vehicles are, even with their limited amount of resources, they're actually able to, to cover a thousand kilometers in 24 hours. So a couple of examples of that. Um, we really want to see this category grow because it is really um, road relevant in terms of what's happening um, out there in the real world with the transition to electric vehicles. All right. Lots to digest there in terms of the categories. So as Tim said though, we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. We do have some other support opportunities for you. So one of our sponsors is Transurban uh, and they have a whole series of uh, engineers, technicians, but also people in uh, PR media sponsorship who are willing and able to come and work with your school and give some advice, maybe talk through some different concepts with you. So. If that's something you're interested in, they're definitely available and interested to uh, come and support you and your students in a way. 
All right, we have a whole <clears throat> gaggle of team that makes up the Energy Breakthrough team, including myself and Tim White there on row number two, as you'll see. But uh, on the top line there, our event director is Emma Little. So she's looking after all things on the ground in Maribara, the physical site. Alicia Chadwick, who would be known to many of you from the past, she's still involved, but leading up our volunteers. <clears throat> Pushcarts is headed up by Rob uh, Higgins. He's also looking after the robotics, as I mentioned. Mick McTeague and Tim, they're sharing duties on the HPVs and the EVs because it is the big beast, as, uh, as Tim mentioned. Display and presentation is Laurie Preston, Triathlon and Junkyard, Mary Preston and online entries. So <clears throat> if you lose your password or any sort of issues with the system, uh, you can get in touch with Locke. <clears throat> All right, some of the other resources, um, I've mentioned most of them, but I do wanna stress that any, of, any members of our team really available to talk on phone, email, do another Zoom like this, um, come in person, Mary, Laurie, uh, Mick, myself, Rob, all happy to come to your school, talk to your students, do a presentation, run a session, anything that you need, we're really willing and, and eager to help you. There are, from time to time, regional test and tune days. So there was one in Ballarat run by Damascus just recently. Uh, they took control of a go-kart track over in Ballarat and had three or four schools come and join them for the afternoon, for the day. Um, and it was a good chance for teachers to come and meet each other, students to meet each other, learn a few things. Um, so those will come up from time to time. And YouTube. So our YouTube channel has a whole lot of past videos. So I appreciate that you may not have all the time in the world, but please set your students onto this um, so that they can look through some of the past webinars, some of the highlights, there's some onboard footage there. Um, and also really importantly, there is martial training. So <clears throat> all of our teams in HPVs, primary and secondary, and energy efficient vehicles and triathlons, all teams this year will need to provide some marshals. And so there is some martial training here. It actually runs through a system on the website as well, but you can watch the videos here off YouTube. <clears throat> all teams will need to provide some marshals throughout the course of the on-track activity. So you can probably just start thinking about your parents or your staff or your extra people for a few hours during the trials this year. So um, that will be part of the, uh, the process that we'll be looking into for this year. Um, ideally, I just saw a question there from Glenn. Ideally over 18, but over 16 is okay, um, providing we can have one uh, supervising adult with those um, students or those people during, um, during the event. There is some online martial training. It really just runs through the rules with a few videos to explain things. Um, and then you'll get a tick off in the system. But that is a change for this year. Previously, uh, some schools didn't have to do any marshalling, but uh, just post COVID and the world that we're living in at the moment, we do require some more people to help put the show on the road. So as I said at the top, all of these different elements, uh, this session will be available on the website. Um, if you do have any questions, do put them in the chat. Um, but I think in just on 45 minutes, I've covered most things about the energy breakthrough. Uh, again, if you're returning, if you've been involved before, you will notice a few changes. Um, we are adapting and improving some pieces. Um, but certainly if you're new, I can understand it's a bit of a whirlwind, as Tim mentioned. So pop some comments on the chat or um, raise your hand. I think you can also do that in, uh, in Zoom. And, uh, and we can go from there for any, any questions that people have got. But no, thanks for joining us this afternoon. And thanks for yeah, being a part of the Energy Breakthrough. It's a pretty exciting um, endeavor. I hope I haven't scared you all off. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's super, super enjoyable. Tim, is there anything you wanted to add? No, fantastic um, presentation as always, Nigel. But for everyone, really, just ask questions. Network as much as you can. When you get to the race, introduce yourself because everyone will be there to support. So yeah, perfect. So good. Well, I don't see any questions in the chat. So that must have mean either people are too scared or um, they've, we've answered all their questions. Um, I'll email this around for all of you this afternoon. 
Um, I'll also share with you those worksheets so you can start having a look at those. I don't expect you to kind of use them word for word, but at least it will start giving you a nudge in the right direction. Uh, some of the feedback we've had in years gone by is that they're like, ah, this design and construction thing, I don't really know what the judges are looking for. Well, we're trying to spell it out as clearly as we can for you with some resources and some sessions like this. So thank you for that. Uh, if anything else changes, keep an eye on the website and your emails and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks guys, take care.